Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to another Java tutorial where we're going to be talking about exception handling. Now, this is the chapter in the book that I always used to skip because you don't really need it to get things up and running. But if you ever want to work as a professional software developer, you need to be able to have proper exception handling in case something in your code goes wrong at 3 a.m. You have code that can properly handle that instead of your whole program crashing. So what is an exception? Well, simply put, an exception is an error that occurs in a program at runtime. Notice how I said runtime. So you can have compile time errors, which should be something like something wrong with your syntax. This is actually something that goes wrong while your program is executing. And these exceptions can be anything from a failed database call to dividing a number by zero. The main advantage of exception handling is that it eliminates much of the programmer's need to manually check for errors. So some older languages like C, an error code would be returned when a method fails. And then you'd have to manually check that, which is very tedious and could lead to more errors. In Java, you just define a block of code called the exception handler and if any error occurs, it will automatically be processed by the exception handler. All right, so here's a roadmap of this video. Uh, first, we're gonna look at the exception hierarchy. We're gonna look at how to use try and catch, which are the two main keywords used when handling exceptions. We're gonna look and see what happens if you don't catch an exception. We're gonna look at manually throwing exceptions. And finally, we're gonna look at the keyword Finally, so the two core components of exception handling are the try and the catch. You can't have a catch without a try and vice versa. So this is the format that a general try catch exception handling block looks like. So you have your keyword try and then you'd have your block of code, which is being monitored for any errors. If an error occurs, it goes into this catch block and then you can write your code for how you want to handle that exception. And then finally, you have the rest of the program. One thing to note is that if everything within the try block goes as expected, as in no exceptions happen, then nothing within the catch block is executed. And the execution of the program resumes after the catch block. So a catch block is only executed if an exception is thrown. All right, so let's look at a basic example of an exception being thrown. So let's create an array here with five elements. Now within this try block, Let's try and set the uh, 10th element equal to a number like 25. Now, since this array only has five elements, we're trying to index something. We're trying to access something that's out of bounds. So since the, this error is happening within this try block, remember the only things that get monitored are within this try block. This is gonna throw an exception. And let's go ahead and uh, print some stuff out just so we can see what's going on. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So we see that that first try statement gets printed, then the exception occurs, and then Java stops executing within this try block and goes into the catch statement where it prints out in catch, and then finally it resumes the execution of the program when it prints out rest of program. Note that we didn't explicitly tell the program to go into this catch statement. Java is pretty smart. We got, we got to give it some credit. It, it sees that an exception occurred and it automatically searches for the catch block and runs the code in there. Following the catch block, the program resumes execution. So it's the job of your exception handler to remedy the problem that caused the exception so that the program execution can continue normally. All right, so let's go ahead and change this up here so it doesn't throw an exception and let's see what happens. So we see that it prints out in try one, then it prints out in try two, and then it finally prints out rest of program. So notice that it never goes into that catch block. Now uh, let's see if we can uh, uh, trick the program a little bit here. Uh, let's go ahead and have this uh, error happen. Let's change it back to throw the error. Let's have it uh, not happen in the main method, but let's have it happen in, in another method. So let's create another method here and let's call it error method and it sets the value of index 10 to 25. And then up here, we just want to call error method. Now, if we run that, we see that it prints out in try one. And in fact, it does throw the exception because we know we see that it goes in the catch block and then finally it resumes the rest of the program. 
So even though the error doesn't explicitly happen, uh, you know, within this main function, since this method here has an error, it still goes into the catch block. And when I'm saying error or exception, I'm, I'm referring to the same thing. Now, one thing that's pretty cool is that you can have multiple catch statements. So say, you know, if there's a divide by zero, I wanna be able to handle that differently than if we have an array out of bounds exception. So Java lets you implement multiple catch statements to do that. So in our program, let's go ahead and create another catch block. And this specific type of exception is going to be array index out of bounds exception. And let's go ahead and print something out here. So in here we'll have in catch one and then let's change this one here to be in catch two. Let's go ahead and run that. And we see that it calls in try one, the error gets thrown, and then we go into that in catch one block and then we resume the rest of the program. Now notice that we still do have this second catch and this here is kind of like a catch all because you know, what if you know we have other stuff in here like a divide by zero, we still wanna be able to handle that exception. So we can have something that catches specific ex exceptions and then we can finally have something that's like a catch all. All right, so now we're gonna be talking about uh, what happens when an exception is uncaught. Let's take a look. All right, so let's go ahead and delete everything here. And now say we have, we create the array, you know, we have an error here and say, uh, you know, this was, you know, something important that was supposed to happen in your code. Now let's go ahead and run it. And we see down here that an exception gets thrown and the program crashes and say, you know, say you needed something important to happen, that would never happen. So I hope you guys can see the importance of having exception handling here. So let's look at something a, a little bit more practical about why you would want to elegantly handle your exceptions. So let's create a program that loops through two arrays and divides their numbers. So here we have an array denoting the numerators and another one denoting the denominators. So let's create a for loop that loops through these. All right, so we wanna create our try catch blocks again. So for each iteration of the for loop, we're simply going to divide the numerator by the denominator at whatever index we're on. So as we can see here, once we get to this denominator of zero, an exception is gonna be thrown because we can't divide by zero. So the error type that's gonna be thrown is called arithmetic exception. And we can print something like, you can't divide by zero. All right, so let's see what happens if we run this. So down here, we see that the first elements divide without any error. The second one, as we expected, throws that exception. And then finally, we uh, divide the next two numbers. So notice how if, if we didn't have this try catch block after the second iteration of the for loop, an error would be thrown and the last two numbers wouldn't be divided. So again, exception handling allows us to elegantly catch this exception and recover from it and resume the execution of our program. All right, so now we're gonna look at uh, how to manually throw an exception. So let's go ahead and delete everything except for the try catch. So how that would look like is you would just simply type in the word throw and then the type of exception. So we could do something like arithmetic exception. Let's go ahead and write some print statements in here. And then in the catch block, let's go ahead and actually print out the exception. So if we hit run, we see that it prints out before throw, and then it throws that exception, which ca causes it to go into the catch block, and then the catch block prints out the type of exception. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I ever wanna manually throw an exception? Well, in Java, you can actually create your own exception types. That's kind of out of the scope of this video, but it's good to know that you can do that. And then you can have your program manually throw that type of exception based on if something happens. All right, so last but not least, we're gonna talk about using the keyword finally. Now, sometimes you might want code to run whether or not an exception was thrown. You know, for example, you could have something that throws an exception, but you have a file that's open or a network connection that's open. You want that connection to close regardless or not of, an of whether an exception has been thrown or not. So Java provides a convenient way to handle all that using the finally block. Now to do that, what we need to do is we need to include the finally block at the end of a try catch sequence. 
the general form of a try catch that has a finally is shown here. So we, you know, we have our normal try block. We have a couple of catches. And then down here, we have that finally keyword um, with a block of code with, you know, whatever you would want to be in there. So let's take a look at an example here. So let's just keep this simple and only have one catch block. All right, so let's go ahead and recreate that, that, uh, that array index out of bounds error. All right, so if we go ahead and run that, we see that we are in the try block. The exception happens. It prints out in exception, and then it calls that finally block. So, you know, like I said, if you have like some kind of file connection open, you're gonna wanna close it regardless of whether there was an exception or not. Now, here's something else that's kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and have this go into the catch block again, but let's try and uh, return out of this statement. So once it goes to the catch, it calls return. So is it gonna go still go in this finally block? What do you guys think? Well, let's go ahead and run it and see. We see that it still goes into that finally block, even though we've actually explicitly told the program to return after the exception was called. Um, it will call that finally block regardless. All right, guys, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, uh, please you know, appreciate it if you hit that like button. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.